Okay, the first thing I recommend doing is to make sure that you have the latest version of Flash Floppy installed on the GoTech. I have another video about how to update the firmware. It's really easy. You just need a thumb drive. And uh, you know, the developer of Flash Floppy is always adding new things and it, he may in the future add some, some optimizations or settings which would make some of the um, suggestions that I have later in this video uh, moot or obsolete because he uh, you know, basically made Flash Floppy more compatible. The second thing I recommend is just checking the jumpers. 90% um, from what I've read and researched in my personal experience, 90% uh, of applications where you're going to use a F GoTech externally, the jumper needs to be on S0. Now that is the same position you have it on when you use it as an internal drive. And there's a lot of talk about always needing to set it to S1 when you're using it as a second drive, DF1. However, that only <clears throat> technically only applies when you are using it in a big box Amiga. When you have one ribbon cable between two drives and you need to identify which drive is which, uh, you know, when they're connected on the same ribbon cable, they, they need to have an ID that lets the computer, the host computer, identify which one is the first one and which one is the second one. So that's that's really the point of the SO and S1. Plus, S1 is the position you need to use for a lot of different non-Amiga equipment, stuff that uses uh, Shootgart uh, interface, uh, IBM type stuff, stuff in the old IBMs and, and, and some of the keyboards and stuff like that. But um, if you do have a rare occurrence where you need to, you know, the solution is to move it to S1, you can try that. Sometimes when you put it on S1, you also need to put a jumper on JC. Uh, not, all this is theoretical as far as I'm concerned. I've heard people su make suggestions in the forums to do that, um, but I don't have any experience with that. I've always been able to get these drives to work externally by using S0 and making some of the changes I recommend later in the video. And we're going to get to those changes right now. What I have here is a, an Amiga 500 Release 5, pretty common. And I have this external adapter. It's a passive adapter. You know, there's no logic on it or whatever so and right now I have the computer turned on I actually have a GoTech in the as the first drive I have another video about uh, how I did this um, internal GoTech that looks like a floppy drive you can watch that just check my channel um, for that but anyway um, it doesn't matter if you have an uh, actual floppy internally a regular floppy or one of those USB GoTechs inside as well right now I have it turned on and set up and no matter what I do at this point I'm not going to be able to get this to work and there's a few things you can do one of the things you can try is to just make sure that you have a thumb drive in the drive when you turn the computer on and that it's not ejected you know there there is a way to eject 
the, the you know, simply selecting using the selection uh, buttons or the rotary encoder if that's what you have and the minute you do that it actually ejects the disk and if you it, and it will save that configuration if you happen to turn the computer off while the disk is ejected um, there's a little file uh, that, it, that flash floppy writes onto the thumb drive that keeps track of what the last image that you selected was and whether it was inserted or ejected I think it's actually literally I'll have the file name and then a little and then like a capital E and a capital J after the file name to indicate that it was ejected when you tried it so anyway so it doesn't matter what I do what image I select it's not going to come up on my workbench screen because basically what happened is that the Amiga didn't see the floppy drive when I turned the computer on because I didn't have a disk in it and even in this configuration it's set up as drive zero because the cable is sort of doing the work of, of doing the, the drive select between DF0 and DF1. So the, the jumper is on S0 instead of S1. If I had this in an Amiga 2000 or such, I would put that on S1 if I want, or yes, S1 if I wanted this to be drive number two inside an Amiga 2000. Um, so basically, uh, <clears throat> that's one method you can use. You can make sure that your thumb drive is inserted and that it actually has a, an image selected when you turn the Amiga on, and that could possibly fix your issue. I've, I've had reports of people, I can't get it to duplicate this particular issue, but I've had reports of people who uh, do that and it still doesn't work until they control Amiga Amiga, restart the computer. And when they do that, then, yeah, okay. Then it will see that it, it just accessed the, this floppy I saw. So that means that when the workbench loads this time, it's gonna, this is gonna fully function now. So basically what I had to do then, or what I've reported, people have reported to me that they've had to do, is after turning it on, uh, then they have to reboot the computer. Um, you know, you have to, don't have to wait for workbench to load all the way. It's just basically a delay that happens from the flash floppy firmware. The third solution to this is if you specify in the configuration file for the GoTech, the flash floppy, that the interface is an Amiga, this problem won't happen because flash floppy doesn't have to check the thumb drive it doesn't have that delay and it will always detect the drive properly and so the procedure would be to create a file on the thumb drive you create an ff.cfg file on the thumb drive and then you simply type in the words interface equals amiga I believe that's it. Interface equals Amiga. Yeah. Interface, you put a space, then you put the equals sign, then you put a space, and then you put Amiga. And then you just save that file, ff.cfg, uh, on, on this, this thumb drive, stick it in there, turn the Amiga on, <clears throat> it will load that uh, configuration file, that piece of information, that configuration option into the external drive, and then from then on, it will immediately know that it's Amiga, and supposedly that is the solution that was brought to my attention because I sell these on <clears throat> excuse me I sell these on eBay and a couple of my buyers tried to use them externally and had troubles came to me for advice and at the time I didn't have it fortunately one of the gentlemen who reported it to me worked with me on the issue told me about the rebooting uh, ish, uh, fix for it and then I decided to go search, <clears throat> excuse me, search for the, the uh, solution. Okay, well, might as well show you. So this is the uh, page, host platforms page. Okay. And you can get to it over here. Yeah. So th this is kind of a convenient navigation thing on the Flash Floppy Wiki. And these are always present. This little box here is always present on every page, so you can always find something. 
So if we uh, click the Commodore Amiga, it brings us down here. So it says to replace an existing Amiga drive usually only requires a jumper on SO. So we don't have to worry about S1. S1 is usually for an internal second drive, like on an Amiga 2000. <clears throat> now here is the notes about the external drive. Replacing the external drive depends on the enclosure or cable being used. Amiga external drive enclosures usually include the circuitry to allow the Amiga to identify the presence of the drive. In this case, the GoTech with SO jumper is usually a straight swap for the old floppy drive. If using a passive cable, uh, such as the one I have, then be aware that the identification circuitry is missing. But for arcane reasons, identification will typically happen to happen to work as long as GoTech has an image mounted when the Amiga boots. If you're having problems with your drive being identified, see forcing drive identification. So we're going to go down here and this is where I mentioned it. So uh, in these, okay, so using it as an external drive with passive interface cable, if flash floppy does not assert ready during boot, example, eject at power on, or no USB stick, or too slow to initialize, which is what apparently my buyers have been experiencing, and the initialization is really just the detection phase. In these cases, flash shopping can be forced to emit the drive ID at pin 34 at all times by adding interface equals Amiga in flashfloppy.cfg. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we have a USB thumb drive. I've got images on it and stuff like that. And we're going to create a uh, text document and we're going to call it ff.cfg and get rid of the dot text. It's going to give us an error. So are you sure you want to do it? Yes, I do. I've covered this in another one of my videos, but you know, why not? It's only going to take us a minute. So we go to the um, flash floppy.cfg and if you've never opened a CFG file on your computer before, it will give you uh, a box that comes up on the screen asking you what you want to open it with. Um, and then you're just going to choose whatever notepad or wordpad or whatever text editor you have on your computer. Um, alternately, instead of double clicking it with your left button, you can click it once with your right and say open with and choose the actual um, program itself. So here's notepad and we're just going to go interface equals Amiga. It was Amiga, right? Yeah. And that's it. Enter, save, exit, <clears throat> oops, eject, eject the disk. So if you were doing this on an Amiga 500 and you, you have it on the external drive, I would probably recommend sticking the thumb drive in there. Um, turning on the Amiga, and then if for some reason it doesn't start to show your file names that are on your USB drive automatically, it just shows like the version of Flash Floppy on the screen, or it just says F-F -F if it's an LED screen. Um, I recommend just turning the computer off and then turning it back on, and it should work just fine. It won't load that uh, that CFG file again. So that is how to do <clears throat> to deal with that. that. That's going to solve your problem because it'll eliminate a uh, delay and we'll go straight to uh, recognizing that it's an Amiga drive immediately by doing that um, by doing that uh, RDY signal during boot. So it's some sort of thing that has to do with the cable as well. Yeah. So anyway, all right, well, that's it, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.